Dunback, CEO of Crown Mining. Of course, we have uh, Brandon Caldwell with us, who's uh, follow the money gentleman. Uh, so, 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 Steve, uh, mining stocks are are shit right now. Let's face it, right? They're <laughs> uh, out of that's favor. Pretty fair. They're out of favor. <laughs> in the toilet. In the toilet. Yeah. Uh, you've got a you got a big asset in mm -hmm. uh, California. You own some of the land. Uh, any updates? <laughs> Any updates? Well, <laughs> the last thing we did was we came out with the PEA yeah. in February. Yeah. So this, and, this is uh, a big historic deposit. Yes. There's, uh, there's 2 billion pounds of copper in a 43101. And when Placer was working on the property in the 60s, they thought there was 4 billion pounds. And the interesting thing is back then, they were only dealing, they were only looking for deposits that were perhaps two, 300 meters deep. So most of our property, most of the deposit that we have is actually open at depth and it's open on strike. So there's a lot more copper there. There's a lot of copper there. Yeah, more than Placer and, and thought, more than what we have in our 43101. How, how many, uh, t the ticker, by the way, is uh, CWM. Yes. Uh, 40 million shares, roughly. Yes. And uh, stocks trading eight, nine cents. So let's say yep. 10 cents, it's capped at $4 million. That's right. Which is That's right. a fraction. Of, well, uh, the of way value. effective is um, in the last copper cycle, which was 2006 to 2012, copper companies were being taken over at approximately 10 cents per pound of copper. So we have 2 billion pounds of copper times 10 cents, $200 million. And right now, you know, market cap, cap is four. 4 million. And we're not the only yeah. one. Every single company yeah. in this space. Has no, you don't uh, have special copper there, you just have no, copper. We have copper and you know, we need higher prices to get people interested, but the entire sector is uh, undervalued. The entire sector, nobody's interested in it. Yeah. All the producers right now are making a lot of money. Um, Freeport came out today. Their cash flow in the first nine months of this year is $4 billion. Their market cap is $16 billion. And, and this is with copper at $2.80. Yeah. So they, they had cash flow? Cash flow of $4 billion in the first nine months. That's incredible. And, and so, so it's every, trading at four times cash flow. Right, yeah. right. Copper Mountain, I've talked to you about that before. Yeah. They, they have cash flow approximately $100 million um, a year. Their market cap is $200 million. Like it's just, it makes no sense. Right. One of these days, people will see there's value here. And, and, and unlike gold, which is a bit of a currency and a hedge, mm -hmm. Copper's needed for, for we, growth. We can't live without yeah. it. Everything, so many things. It's, it's behind electricity, and ele electricity is how we, we get by. It's how we move around. And the it's, world. It's where, how light gets delivered into the office building. The it's where heat comes from. The electrification of, of the world is continuing it's, uh, faster and faster. That's right. Mm -hmm. Electricity demand basically comes from two things, population growth and urbanization. And there's no stopping that. Like the people in India, the people in China, they want what we have. There's no stopping demand for copper. So Yeah, I remember a few years ago as well reading about that we were going into a shortage of copper, mm -hmm. uh, a, a severe one. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, I think it was by 2018 or 19, it was going to begin. By 2020, it was going to be bad. Huge. Like we yeah. were, no, we're, we're already there. Mm -hmm. We're already in a deficit. Yeah. We have been in de a deficit, I think, for the past six, nine, 12 months. So for the viewers, what, that means yeah. that they're producing less than it's being consumed. That's right. Every mm -hmm. year. That's right. And what's making up for it right now is the inventory levels that were out there. So yeah. inventory is basically making up the shortfall, but that can only go on for so long. And you've also got a huge, there's a huge player in the market space right now, and that's China. Like they basically buy half of all the copper that's consumed. Yeah. Now, if, if you think about you know, copper on a big macro level, uh, there's approximately 20 million tons produced. Uh, there's 25 million that's actually consumed, and the difference is uh, scrap. scrap. Yeah. But if you look at that 25 million tons times approximately $3 a pound, that's $150 billion space. So it's in China's interest to keep prices as low as they can. Like if they can drag prices down by 10%, which is what they just did. Yeah. They save themselves $7 billion. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, 
they're going to put themselves in a corner because nobody's going to build any new copper mines with copper prices at two dollars and eighty cents. Yeah. Like we need basically three fifty. So three fifty right. is like so a historical average. No, that's for. basically when you take a look at all the copper deposits that are out there. On average, they need three fifty to justify the spend. To just because it gotcha. costs a lot of money to build these things. Yeah. Um, so we're looking. Basically, Crown and any of these other juniors is, is an option on copper. If you think demand for copper in the future is going to continue, and if you think the supply side is going to continue to roll over, then you'll think prices need to go up. So, mm -hmm. you know, a good way to get some exposure to copper is some of these junior companies, yeah. and Crown is one of them. Yeah, yeah so. Robert Friedland, who's uh, legendary and has found some very big deposits worldwide, mm -hmm. I think he's he's quoted as saying that, you know, as time goes on, copper won't be quoted in pounds; it'll be quoted in ounces right, because, right. You, you know, I mean, anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. Well, there's there's crazy forecasts out there right now. Like this cycle, there are people like Friedland who are calling for numbers like six dollars, seven dollars a pound. Wow. And can you imagine how much these mining companies are going to be making if copper prices go there? Sure. Like, to, just take a look at Freeport. They came out today. They produce four billion pounds of copper a year. They have cash flow of four billion right. in the first nine months. Copper goes up a dollar. Like there's another four billion dollars in cash flow. Yeah. And here's the interesting thing. Nobody can just go build a mine in a year. Like it takes it takes five, six, seven years to get a mine permitted and then built. Right. So there's there's no short term solution here. Yeah, and that's what I remember hearing actually a few years ago when we were looking at it from an economic standpoint. Uh, you've got a shortage that's, that's looming, we already mm -hmm. knew it, but because of prices being down, nobody was really going out there to create these mines that do take yep. years, especially if it's starting from scratch. Yep. And now we're having it where we're having a supply crunch. Anybody has any idea of economics understands if your supply is not there and the demand starts rising, which it will with all these electric cars, electric yep. houses, whatever it yep. be, yep. that's when you have to start realizing that prices are, if, if you're able to, if, if there's two people and I only have enough for one, I'm going to see how much I can charge for it, yep. and I don't care who wins. Yep. Like that's what all no, that's businesses right. are asking that's themselves. Right. Well, if yeah. you take a look at the at the power points of all the major mining companies, like Rio Tinto, BHP, they all talk about how the future for copper is is so rosy. They all want to be there, yeah. and they're they're. They're looking around the globe trying to find new copper deposits, but there aren't a lot of them. And, and, and the grades of the deposits are a lot uh, lower today yes. than they were tw 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, I, yep. the low-hanging fruit gets, 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 uh, gets, gets picked, picked off. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Escondida, which is the largest mine, largest producing mine, I'm pretty sure, it's grade, when they started mining there, I think 35 years ago, was 1.45%. They're now mining down around 0 0.6, 0 0.65. So it's just, you know, they've, they're going deeper and deeper. Yeah. They're, that's, that's they're not Chile. getting, that's in Chile, yeah. they're not getting the same grade, so they're having to move twice as much ore to get the same amount of copper. But they're, they're getting deeper and deeper, so it gets more expensive to, yeah. to dig the rock out. Like it's, uh, we've got a looming uh, problem here in yeah. the copper space. And if you're positioned, you're gonna make some good money. I don't know when it's gonna happen. Yeah. I thought it was gonna yeah. be this year. Yeah, you know? no, I, and, uh, last week we saw a day where uh, there was a million, 200,000 shares of Crown Trade. And if you go back and look at a 10 year chart, that was the biggest trading day in volume mm -hmm. in 10 years, wow. a million two. Yeah. There's not that much stock. There's only 40 million shares. 40 million. And 70% and, and, uh, yeah. of it's probably tied up in yeah. pretty friendly hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like I have 20%. I've got a few friends that yeah. each have almost 10%. Yeah. This so is a way of, of playing copper futures without buying it without the risk, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to get a margin call. You're not going to yeah. get a margin not, call. It's not going to expire on you. And whereabouts, uh, I might have missed it in the very beginning, whereabouts is the mine? Uh, the, the property itself is approximately 90 miles drive from Reno, okay. and we're northwest. So we're in California, but we're very close to the Nevada border. Northwest of Reno, northeast that, right. California. That's right. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's, uh, and it's, it's mountainous, and it's very, very rural. Where we are, there's nobody around. Um, yeah. 
And it, it's like I said, it's two old mines. They were mining this back in the 1915 to 1930 period. Yeah. And uh, they were actually mining back then. They were taking copper out. It was the grade was averaging around two percent, yeah. and they left anything that was not two percent behind. So that's what wow. we have. It's probably way easier now to mine. I can imagine as well. Oh, what we've done the last hundred right. years. You should, like <laughs> now back it's economical in, now. Back okay. in those days, <laughs> they got there by horse, yeah. and eventually they put a railway in there. But I can't imagine how hard it would have been the life yeah. to be a miner yeah. back in those days. Yeah. To be a prospector, to be a miner. You know, they had dynamite and stuff like that. But yeah. you know, they, they used horses to get a lot of things out. Yeah. And then finally the rails came in. But, uh, but all that infrastructure is still there. We've got a paved highway that goes right up to within 100 yards of our, our adit. Mm. Um, right. So we've got electricity there, we've got running water. So, I, so if you said, if you said uh, based on the, how many holes did Placer drill there, four or five hundred? Placer drilled, yeah, there was over 400 holes back in the 60s. And to, and and to then, drill it properly, you could drill another thousand holes, could, could you? You know what, if, if a major took a look at this property, they would probably drill another two to three hundred. Okay. And just, because and, what they would want to do is this further define how much was there, where the extensions were, and do drilling which is necessary for the actual mine right. design. Mm -hmm. um, but we already know we've got a couple billion pounds. And a little bit more drilling, we can increase that, but we don't need to. It's, right. you know, it's the res resource yeah, so is there. Yeah. So, so you know, you know you're, if you're buying a marijuana stock, you might say you're buying a growth story, a momentum play. If you're buying crown, you're buying value, yeah. uh, and but it but but we don't know when. You, you, have you don't to be know patient. when, and it's not. We're you not saying to buy it today. I started buying it a year ago. Do, do I wish I waited? Sometimes, but I feel like it's well, going to happen. I feel like the electrification of the world's going to continue. Yeah, uh, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, you wonder like what what you you know you never know what's coming around the corner. There's some funny things going on in the world, but most of the automakers are said, you know, we're going electric. Yeah. It's, it's and then yeah. four times motors. the amount of copper yeah. in electric car. In electric in, car, but yeah. the, the, the other thing, which is huge, which I think a lot of people miss, is when they build a megawatt of power using wind or solar, they're using more copper to actually deliver that megawatt of power. Like mm -hmm. they're using four to five times as much copper right. to actually deliver it. And then here's the other neat thing, um, battery storage, is going to become huge in the future because the only way wind really makes sense, you know, and I think most of the engineers are going to admit this, but the only way wind makes sense, sense is if you can store it because most mm -hmm. of the time wind power is produced when you don't need it. D does that and wind, the global is adjustment ca field. Kathleen wind making sense or, or wind? I'm sorry, <laughs> oh. sorry, I got that mixed up. There's a so reason why they had seven seats after, but anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but battery storage <laughs> is hugely copper intensive. Because yeah. it, just think about it, you've got, to, you've got to have all these copper wires sending the electricity to whatever battery uh, formula you're going to use and then get it back to the grid. Yeah. So there, it's hugely copper intensive. Yeah. So there's, there's so many new avenues, there's so many different uh, sources of demand for copper mm -hmm. in the renewable sustainable energy model. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you cannot stop this demand for electricity. You cannot stop it. The no. whole world wants what we have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know. Steve, we're going to have to wrap it up now. Okay. But but thanks again for coming on and Thank short you. note.